gotta be honest with you, it feels so good to be back on YouTube and recording videos and doing my thing. I feel like it's just a way for me to connect with you guys outside of our weekly lives and in the group and all of those things. So I'm really excited to be back. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here for The Social Life, the place where we talk about profit, purpose, and productivity. And today I'm going to be talking to you about all of those things because really all of those things are what make up a business. And I want to give you a head start, especially if you're planning on taking this challenge with me, um, the 20 days off challenge, uh, where we take time off away from our businesses so that we can stop working inside of them and work on them um, and just give ourselves a time to just rejuvenate and kind of reset uh, and get ready for the new year and come back fresh. Well, good morning. So I had a super late start um, and um, had to help my kids with some homework this morning and well not homework but studying um, and want to make sure they were really good for some tests today. So um, and I woke up late of course so that was that was the main reason otherwise I wouldn't have been here. Um, but anyway went to bed late last night I was talking to my husband and And I just want to say that like, you know, sometimes you will get knocked off of your, your time schedule and how you like to do things. And I really like to stick to mine because it really does set the tone for the day. Um, but you know, in those cases, like sometimes you just have to, you know, do a shorter, uh, workout or you have to do, um, things in a different order. And so that's what I'll be doing today. So, um, instead of like emptying the dishwasher and, you know, sending a load of laundry and all of that. Um, I will probably do that at lunch today instead of doing it before I sit down to work. So now it's nine o'clock um, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started working and then I will film this video a little bit later um, and upload the other video for yesterday. Um, and that's how I'll go about my day. So it just changes things a little bit, but when you know the things that you have to get done for the day, um, it really does make a difference in how you're going to, um, how efficient you're going to be because now you're not trying to still fit everything in. You just know what you can, you know, take out and, and what you can't. So for instance, generally when I sit down to eat breakfast, I would not, um, I would sit down and, you know, really enjoy my breakfast and I would make some big thing, but now I'm just going to throw in a smoothie with a smoothie pack and I'm going to sit down and start working because I don't have that kind of time today. So, um, even though I work from home, even though, you know, my kids are home and everything, I still like to really, um, keep it as regimented as possible. I think just for my own sanity too, just for my brain to know that, okay, you know, this is what we do. This is, it's nine o'clock. We sit down, we work. Um, and you know, you just kind of got to roll with the punches. You guys have seen, um, I think, uh, on Monday or something. I think my day didn't get started until like 10 o'clock and that's super late for me. But, um, you know, these are the things that if you just know that you're going to get your time in and you know what you have to get done, uh, it makes things a lot easier. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and tell you guys that and let you know that that is the deal and that's what's happening today. I do plan to, um, highlight a few books for you guys today that I really think are amazing books that everybody should read. So I will be recording that a little bit later today. Um, but yeah, that's, that is today. And today is day nine. Wait, no, 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 no. Today is day 10. <laughs> I got to remember these things. Today's day 10. Um, so yeah, I, I've got, and I've got quite a bit of stuff to do. Today's Thursday. So this is usually a day where I would, um, prep for the following week. Uh, I like to take Fridays and, you know, if I have something to catch up on, great, then I'll do that. But if I don't, I usually, if it were normal, we weren't, you know, um, in COVID, I would usually like have lunch with friends or see a friend. Um, but it is a good day to use as your correspondence day. 
um, just to kind of, you know, if you have thank you notes you need to get out or you have gifts you need to give away or like for Christmas this season. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably drive around some gifts that I need to give away um, or order some gifts if you still have to do that. Um, it's still early enough. But yeah, there's lots of things that you can do. And I like to do those things on Friday where they're more, they're lighter um, things where I'm, I might be having more fun with them. So like I might write, you know, read, um, wrap gifts. I might do some things like that. Um, do something with the kids in the afternoon, whatever it is. But that day is just a little bit more free and you can do kind of whatever you want to do or like catch up on things that are important to you but have nothing to do with work um, and productivity and all of those things. So uh, this is just to show that, you know, you can be as productive as you want to be, you know, and as long as you have that schedule in mind, which is what I always call the daily docket, as long as you have that kind of stuff, that's how you make the days work, even when your times are off. So don't get discouraged by your times being off. Don't worry about that. Just get back on your horse, start where you need to, um, know like the number one priorities for you. Like I know the number one priority for myself is to work out. I have to do that now. I've realized this about myself. Otherwise my brain is like sludge. So, um, I always try to make sure I work out, always try to make sure that I'm, you know, getting, um, that part of my day in no matter what. Um, and then sometimes you guys know, sometimes I like to do like yoga and walking or yoga and walk the dogs or whatever. And the walking piece is huge, but that can be done at any point in the day. So today I just made sure I did yoga. It really sets me on the right path. Any sort of exercise, like if it's working out, whatever, anything that's going to get your blood moving is really good to do at least one of those things in the morning. And then the rest will follow. You will get everything else done that you have to. Your brain is so much more efficient. Um, so anyway, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go make my smoothie. I'm going to work while I drink the smoothie and then um, have a little bit of black tea. Uh, and yeah, and that's going to pretty much uh, start the day. So I just wanted to come on and let you guys know that, yes, I did not get my uh, 5.30 a.m. time in today. I actually woke up, woke up around 6.30. My husband needed a haircut. <laughs> so I helped him with that, uh, which pushed me off a little bit more. Then my kids woke up. They wanted to study through some flashcards or whatever. So we did that um, instead of working out. And then I didn't get over there until about, eight, uh, I think about eight o'clock. Yeah. So um, quick workout, shower, do my thing, hair. That's why the hair is looking the way it does today. Um, Try to put on a little lipstick because you know I like my lipstick every morning. Okay, even my daughter just asked me, why are you so dressed up? I'm like, I'm not dressed up. I'm just looking the way I like to look every day. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do feel like, you know, getting yourself ready for the day, even when you're working from home is really, really important. It's critical um, just to your mindset to, you know, be ready for the day and um, basically tell yourself like, hey, we're ready to work. So anyway, um, this is, yeah, a critical piece of my morning. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when things don't go perfect uh, because they don't always go perfect. And as much as I try to keep it perfect, it just doesn't happen. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, I will come back with the books later. Okay. Bye. We're going to jump into this. I have nine books today. And what I've done that's a little bit different is sometimes you'll see book reviews where, um, they give you all these books, but you don't really know like when you should read them or what point of your life or business these are best for. And so I really want to explain where these are best and how they're going to work more efficiently for you, um, in your life and your business. So I've got them set up into three different areas. The first area is basically just starting a business, thinking about starting a business, um, and kind of how you can start your startup. Um, so it'll lead into that and I'll explain each book and how you should read them in order. Now the next uh, phase of that is your, basically your building phase. Um, and your building phase is when you're actually trying to build up your business, you're trying to make sure you've got everything taken care of in your business um, so that you can actually start you know, making a profit because that's the foundational piece of the business. And so these books that I'll be talking to you about are kind of some of the basics um, that you might need to know or that you want to build off of. And then the last part is maintaining. So this is the maintaining phase. This is when you are officially a business owner. You've opened your business. You've been maybe running your business for a while. You've tried different things and now you're kind of ready to just 
focus in um, on the things that are most important to you about your business. So I'm really excited about this. This is probably one of my favorite videos. I love talking about books. Anytime we're talking about books, I'm just happy. So just know that, um, sit back, enjoy, grab a cup of coffee, grab some wine. I don't know what time it is where you are, but whichever is your fancy, some black tea, whatever it is, water, because we all could use some water. Um, so I'm gonna start with the first one, which is called The Miracle Morning. You've probably heard of this one. It's by Hal Elrod. And the reason I really wanted to make sure I talk to you guys about this one is because I do feel like having a morning routine is fundamental, okay? Like it is essential, okay? Like you really need to have a morning routine because it is something that will change your life for the better. Um, and setting your morning in motion and just getting the things done that are gonna set you on the right path for the entire day is huge. So in this book, he really talks about how to set up your morning. I just want you to see his name, Hal Elrod. How to set up your morning. Um, and he gives you a lot of things. I will tell you that I think the book is great, especially if you're just starting out. And I heard about it a lot when I purchased it. Um, I think he, you know, it's a good book. Like hands down, you're not going to lose if you read this book. If you don't have a morning routine yet, I would definitely recommend reading this book because having a morning routine, setting your day, getting your day off to the right start and really, um, you know, uh, what is the word I wanna use? Um, setting intention for your day is huge. So um, he goes off of this method called life savers and I'll go quickly through what some of them mean. I don't use all of them, but the main idea is that you need a morning routine. So silence, affirmations, visualization, visualization, I can't speak today, exercise, reading, and scribing. Now, I do some of these, not from this book specifically, but um, just from knowing that those are really good things for you to do. I don't do the silence and I don't do the affirmations um, and I don't do visualization on a regular basis. Now I do do these things when I need them, but I don't do them on a regular basis. Um, but this is just a good book to start. Like get a foundation, figure out what's gonna work well for you, for you and your life and the amount of time that you have in the morning. Um, and all of this really that he puts together takes about an hour Exactly, it's like five minutes of silence, five minutes of affirmations. Um, and you know, having, having affirmations are actually really good for you. Um, I have found that I generally do affirmations to myself just in general. Um, I, I try not to do any negative self-talk to myself, so I try to only do positive, so positive talk. Um, so I think that those types of things are Pretty much in my routine if they're already in your routine or some of these things like maybe you do silence maybe you know for me right now silence would be doing yoga in the morning and so that's how I feel like I get some of that in there but I'm telling you excellent book to start off with I will go a little faster on the rest sorry but that's a good book to start with uh, the next book is start something that matters by Blake Mykowski 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 yeah um, I hope I'm saying that name right but anyway Okay, so when I was thinking about starting a nonprofit, I wanted to start a nonprofit that I thought would really be uh, full of purpose and also make a profit. I have always, always thought that those two go hand in hand. If you're starting a nonprofit or you're starting a business, I think you should have both of those elements in there. If you have a for-profit business, you should have a purposeful aspect to your business. And if you have a nonprofit, you should have a profitable aspect to your business. I really believe that that is the key to surviving um, especially nowadays, I think people do look for purpose in business. They want to see like what you're all about, um, you know, what you care about, do you align with their values, things like that. And so anyway, so this book is a great, um, it's just a feel good book. Uh, he really does give some good business advice too on how he created his business. It's a very, um, novel idea. You know, it's Tom's shoes. So that's who he is. He's the founder of Tom's shoes. Um, and they do the buy one shoe and they give a shoe to someone in another country. Um, and he's made a lot of impact with, with his business, which is huge. But he does talk about like the inner workings of his business, like how he found his people, the hiring side of things. Um, it's a very easy read. Uh, it's a nice one if you just kind of 
want to get some ideas for your own business to see how you might do things. One of the things I took from him was uh, not naming my like program director anything or naming myself, you know, CEO, like I call myself, you know, um, chief launcher. Uh, and so he just has a lot of fun ways to do things and we call uh, our program director like mission control. There's a lot of things that we, um, that we name our, we use other names and I thought that was a brilliant idea. He's got a ton of good things in this book. Uh, it, it's a good, good gym if you're, if you're thinking about starting a business and you do want to have those two elements, profit and purpose. Um, and if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you do know that that's something that I preach and I'm very serious about that. It means a lot to me. I think that that's the way our uh, world is, is going right now. Um, that, you know, just putting a business out there is not nearly as good as having a business with purpose and vice versa. If you're a purposeful business, having a business that makes profit, um, if you want to be taken seriously. So the next book I have is The Lean Startup. And honestly, you guys, this book has meant so much to me because um, you know what? It takes the perfection side out of a business. You can be thinking about your business and trying to like come up with all these iterations that could happen in your business um, and never actually start. And what this book really talks about is you just have to start and you go with the most minimum viable um, product that you have and then you build off of that as you grow so I don't know you guys probably have heard by now that there are lots of businesses out there that will um, create an online course or sell an online course that isn't even created and they actually recommend you do that right and because of that the reason is because if you haven't created you know 12 weeks worth of work or you haven't created or poured in all that time to create something that people don't actually need it allows you to pivot, pivot and adjust right away. And um, that's kind of the main gist of this book. When you're creating anything though, like a product, a service, um, anything, a tech startup. And I think that's really what he was creating was a tech startup. And it just is a great book. You'll hear about it many times um, if you ever hear people talking about books you need to read. So these are the three books I would recommend uh, for getting started in business or wanting to start a business, start here, get your morning right, figure out um, some ideas on how you can incorporate purpose and profit, and then just start, okay? Um, so those are those three in the starting section of your business. Now in the building phase of your business, which is a lot of fun, I love the building phases of business because this is really where the nitty gritty happens. And it's just so fun to, you know, I don't I call it get your hands dirty because, you know, you're going to make flops. You're going to do things wrong. You're going to figure out things. You're going to see what works best for your business and what doesn't. Um, in the first book that I have to talk about, I can never talk about building a business without this book. It's my favorite. The E-Myth. Okay. The E-Myth is amazing. It's by Michael Gerber and he is like a genius and honestly the information in here is very very simple and it looks like a really thick book but um, it's easy to follow and it's just really really good information because what he's actually talking about is a lot of people get stuck okay for instance with my challenge I should actually make an ode to this book because this is just part of how I think now people make um, people set up their businesses and they are working inside of their business so much that they never take the time to work on the business. And really what he's talking about in this book um, in relation to that is focusing on delegation. So you have to understand the parts of your business that you don't really need to be doing. Um, and I talk to you guys about this all the time as far as weaknesses. So. If you don't have, if you're not strong in some area, but you're struggling to always get it done, and that's what you know, you're constantly focusing on getting it done. You're you're like wasting valuable time and energy when you could just be focusing on your strengths, and find someone else to do that job that you're not that great at, and you do what's best for you. But he is like the father of entrepreneurship when it comes to. Uh, just realizing that hey, yeah, you've got a business, but you have to run this business too. You can't just you know 
you can't just be the person you know in there baking pies but but if you're going to be the person baking pies then you need to find someone who's going to do the back end that you trust right all, all the accounting all of the things that the marketing the social media all those things so that is a great book that I think every business owner hands down should just have this book you should leaf through it you can listen to it and all of these books you know you don't have to read them you can listen to them if you prefer like while you're cooking dinner or while you're on the treadmill this is how this is how I obviously listen to books um, yeah I mean these are all books that you can just listen to and still get the information still understand the premise of the book and the reason why you need the book um, so this next book okay now this is another one like I've seen this book so many times that I don't even have the cover anymore okay um, but anyway it's platform by uh, Michael Hyatt and it's get no noticed in ease in a noisy world now okay this book this book okay is like the OG honestly because um, this one is 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 basically like a checklist okay of everything that you need to have in your business to at least have the foundational pieces of your business like yeah you just want to go through this to make sure you've got everything now some of this information is a little outdated um, because gosh you know technology and the world is going so fast right now um, but it's all really good information and you can certainly scale it to wherever you are right now so you know maybe you don't make a, a, a press release kit but maybe you'll make a online media release page or something so it's things like that like some of the things that he talks about um, are not necessarily uh, all of them are not uh, usable right now but it's still a very good read and I think it's something that just will refresh you too to say like okay yeah I should I should actually do that or maybe I don't want to use business cards anymore or maybe I'm gonna do a different way of using my business cards um, how to use social media he it's all about building your platform and it's so important to have your platform right and um, create something that people can actually uh, find you and you know connect with you and so that's a great book for that um, I'm trying to think of a couple of things that he might have in here that you know you might need to I mean it's 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 all very practical information it's I, I have I don't have another way to say it very very practical very useful information you might find like five things in this book out of you know a hundred or more that are outdated that's what I mean when I say outdated so don't think that the book is outdated because honestly this one right here was written in like 1984 and it's still really good it's still true to everything um, that that he says I mean this is more of a philosophy of being an entrepreneur this is practical okay my last book in this section of the building section is Gary Vaynerchuk okay if you haven't read jab 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 I think right hook um, that's another good book but I think crushing it is good to um, as an updated kind of you know millennial version of what people are doing in their businesses and really how they're out there crushing it what they did to get there um, it, it's a good it's a good book and I I know I'm actually probably missing another book like I think tribe of mentors is another great book by um, oh my gosh what's his name right now I'll try I'll try to write it in when I find it but anyway that's another great book um, but crushing it is good it's got a lot of good information um, I like Gary Vaynerchuk because he does do things very differently he thinks very differently in relation to uh, how we approach social media how we document our lives rather than um, trying to always like have something beautifully posted he's just very real more along the lines of my philosophy as well um, where I say progress over perfection so again crushing it Gary Vaynerchuk great book go get it you will love it now okay that is it for so I'm gonna hold these three up for you guys for that is it for the um, building your business side uh, because this is these are these are just good like if you don't have a lot of time these nine books will give you so much information they would be books that if I um, had a friend who was starting a business or a friend who 
was in the middle of a business and just wanted something to read to get some motivation or to get some practical tips, these are books that I would give them. And you guys are my friends, of course. Um, so the next book that I'm gonna to talk to you about is more on, these three books are more on like the productivity side because when you're in that maintaining phase, it is all about productivity. Um, it's all about getting things done, um, running your business, making sure that you're staying on task, making sure that you are accomplishing goals and that you are focused on um, your, your main intent of your business, right? And creating a profit, making purpose, um, you know, making an impact, things like that. So you have to be productive. So all of these, the last three books are all about uh, productivity. And um, this one is kind of like, I would say a segue from business to productivity because this one is um, really good. If you feel overwhelmed on how much stuff you have to do in your business and you don't even know where to start, you're like, I just have no clue where to start. I have so many things I need to do. And that happens to all of us. It's, I mean, it happens all the time. Now, this book is fantastic for that because the main idea behind this book and what I took away from this book that I still use to this day when I feel that way is I stop and I ask myself, what is the one thing that will make everything else easier or better? Now, I ask this for everything in my life, which is kind of crazy. Like you read one book and something really sticks with you. I ask this for everything. So, you know, if, if we've got, um, if, if we get funds for our nonprofit or um, I need to make some sort of business decision, I always ask myself or my board, I say, what is the most important thing right now? And that question is always so vague, but it starts you thinking, right? when you start to kind of come down with some things like, okay, here are a lot of things that are important, right? Then you say, what out of those things will make everything else easier and better? And the way he describes it in this book is like a lever that will make everything, like you can lift a bunch of stuff with this one lever um, instead of, you know, trying to deal with that one big thing over there. You got this one lever that's going to get rid of it and make everything easier. So, this book is amazing. It's just a good read if you if you are, I think it's just a good read for anyone really, but really good if you're a business owner um, because he does talk a lot about how to determine what you're gonna do in your business and um, you know he has stories and stuff in there. So it's, it's a great book. Okay, deep work. Okay, this book, like I seriously would probably like reread this like so many times. Sorry, I have hair on my hand. Sorry. Um, so I love this book. Okay. This one is all about focus. So Cal Newport, um, he, he's just, I think he's an engineer or something and they talk about trying to create different things and you know how some people are like, okay, you should have a, a, a four day, 10 hour work week so that your employees can be more efficient and get more done. But really what he says is, if we can just focus for two to three hours on one project, we could get so much more done than stopping to do all these different things. And one big thing that I got from this one is the shutdown ritual. I feel like this is so, so important. Um, and I think one of the things that he talks about in here is um, uh, attention residue is what it's called, I think. And basically what he talks about is we all focus on one thing, then we stop and we try to focus on the next thing and we stop and we try to focus on the next thing. But what that does is that leaves a residue and this is apparently like a study that has been done that you're still thinking about the past thing that you were working on so you don't even really start focusing on the new thing until like five or 10 minutes in and that's just wasting time. So if you wanna improve your efficiency and your productivity, Deep Work is an excellent book. Um, this is also the book that got me started on no notifications. So I, you guys probably have already heard if you've been, yeah, on, on anything really that I talk about social media. Um, I talk about no notifications. It's huge. Um, it's truly been a game changer in life. Um, in, just in life, like in my home and my family, like how I raise my children, I tell them they are not allowed to have any notifications on their phones as well. Um, 
and they have come back to me and told me that they feel the difference, which is huge because I have a teenager and a younger one, a preteen. So, um, so yeah, that means a lot to me. Uh, but as far as, yeah, like in your life and in your business, it really does make a difference to just not be interrupted. All the things that you're being interrupted on are just not important. They're not, I mean, I don't need to know if somebody liked my, my picture, right? Like I, I mean, I'll go there and I'll check them when I'm ready to check them, but I don't need to know that like every time it happens. So anyway, think about that. I don't want to go on some big, you know, long thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The next one is essentialism. So when I just talked about some things are unimportant, essentialism, um, they really talk about what's most essential in your life. Like, can you get down to the most essential things? Can you narrow your life down to the most essential things? And this isn't, I'm not talking about like becoming a minimalist. I, that's not what I'm referring to at all. I'm talking about we have a lot of fluff around us that takes up our attention. And he's basically asking like, do you need all of that fluff that takes up your attention? And he's talking about it in relationships. He's talking about it in, in every aspect, your business, the things you focus on, the things you work on. Like, are you doing busy work or is it essential work? Um, this book is just really amazing. And it really has a, this would be a great audio book, by the way. Um, he just has a lot of good things to say. And one of the things that I actually, I write in my books, guys. I don't know if you can see that, but like I circle all this. <laughs> I write in my books a lot. Um, anyway, I feel like it's like a dialogue back and forth. But anyway, so he has four quadrants and I just want to give you this as an example. So general, um, there's a, a vision mission, you know, that we create for every business, right? But basically what they say on that is that that's too, it's, it's very inspiring, but it's so general that we don't generally look at our vision and mission every single day. Um, and then he goes to values. Values are necessary. They are necessary and they are important. But when was the last time you like stopped and looked at your values? Probably not anytime soon. Um, and then he talks about your quarterly objectives. Now your quarterly objectives, you probably do look at more often. Um, I know I do. <coughs> excuse me and you base your goals off of that so that's great but it's just not inspiring at all right like you look at it you know what you have to do but it's not like inspiring you now your essential intent the way he puts it is like deciding whether you're gonna go be a doctor or a lawyer right like if you decide that you're gonna take the path of becoming a lawyer then you're not gonna think about taking biology or you're not gonna think about learning science as much, you're going to focus more on, you know, political government, political science or, or something like that. So it's really important to make sure that you are making decisions based on what is most essential. Otherwise you're spending a lot of your time spinning your wheels, which none of us need to do because we got things to do. So the other piece of this is, um, the way I wanted to put it to you guys is like, you know, we create our mission vision, right? We create our quarterly objectives, we create our values, all these things. But when it really comes down to brass tacks, if you had to get rid of your website or you had to redo something on your website, what would you say is the most important thing that like your why, as far as your business goes, that you cannot let go? And I had to do this just recently because there are many different ways that we could operate our nonprofit. But when I realized like, what's the most important thing or is this element that important? Yes, it's essential to what we do. And what was essential to us was that we had to have the online giving platform, the crowdfunding piece of it, because that really is the whole point of the organization. So when you can boil things down to what is the overall main point here, um, it actually is so eye-opening because it helps you make all the other decisions that you need to make. Um, it makes things super simple. So if you want to simplify life a little bit and you just want to like understand his philosophy, um, Greg McGowan, this is a great, great, great book. Essentialism is fantastic. So I will have all of these books linked down in the description box. Um, so you guys can get those there if you want. Um, and I also will have a list uh, that you guys can just grab if you want to grab these in order. 
um, and by like the specific area that I'm talking about so that if you ever want to use it for reference, you can, you can just print it off and use that. Um, but I, I really like, I love these books and I think they are so helpful. Um, they'll give you a good grasp of your business if you read them in order and just for your life in general, right? I don't feel like you separate your life from your business, your business and your life kind of like coexist, right? It's like a happy little home because generally you are your business and you are the brand. And so you have to be mentally healthy, mentally right, uh, physically right, right? So that you can run your business um, and you need to be aware of what needs to be done. So, I mean, you can learn from all the gurus out there, but you need to have a baseline understanding of how a business runs. What types of things should you be looking for? What's most important in your business? You need to know these things because you're leading your business and you are the one that is actually making this business happen. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope if you enjoyed this video that you will subscribe, share it with a friend who needs to know or who is looking for a great book um, in business. These are all amazing books. Um, and I'm going to add just one more as a bonus because I'm rereading this one. Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People is an amazing book as well. And I'll also link that one down below. Um, I'm actually just listening to it this time as an audiobook while I walk on the treadmill or cook dinner or any of the other things, walk the dogs, whatever I'm doing. Um, and it's, it's a good, it's just a good refresher because, you know, relationships truly are the bedrock of business and of life and family. And it's just good to um, give yourself that refresher. So not to get too serious, but anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow because this is Vlogmas. Anyway, um, get out there and unleash your something amazing, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.